That's awesome. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everyone here on this holiday weekend. Uh, it, I, it is great to, to see everyone. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people have holiday plans and everything. I hope you have a wonderful, marvelous uh, holiday tomorrow. Uh, whether you're here or whether you have a cookout plan, whether you have something with family or church, however you have it, I hope you have a lot of fun tomorrow and enjoy the time. Uh, we want to uh, uh, remind people as you look at the, the bulletin, if you have that, our youth group fundraiser yard sale is Saturday, June the 5th, um, as uh, we look forward towards that. Uh, we want to welcome all the ones who are on video and uh, everything. It's a little cool for outside today, but uh, uh, it is good to see everyone. We do have a couple announcements. Uh, Angela is going to share a little bit about our new COVID things. But then also listen closely because she has something about someone you really care, uh, care about, Linda Kelly, uh, your former pastor and stuff. So listen closely. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Angela Moser. I'm chair of church council and part of the reopening committee. Um, as you know, the state of North Carolina came out with new guidelines um, for wearing masks, and so did our North Carolina conference. So if you're vaccinated, I'm so glad to see your smiling faces without masks this morning. Um, but please remember that sometimes people have to continue wearing masks due to um, other illnesses they may have and they're just trying to protect themselves. Uh, we do ask that people stay about three feet apart and refrain from shaking hands and hopefully someday here in the near future we'll be able to give each other hugs and handshakes and other signs of welcome here in our church uh, and all. Our guidelines are fully on our website, and um, the only caveat is to make sure that if you are singing with all the hymns, to, to wear a mask at the time. So, some news about Linda Kelly. Linda Kelly is retiring, and they're having a secret surprise retirement party for her. So, if you have any contact with Linda Kelly still, please please don't let her know that they're planning a surprise party for her. But if you can either email um, a letter to Linda Kelly to the church office or drop off of a card to the church office on Tuesday and Wednesday morning, we will be sending out a packet of congratulations. Glad, glad to hear your, you reached retirement cards and, and notes to Linda Kelly. Um, there will be more information in our bulletins about when her retirement party um, will be and everything like that. And she's retiring and moving to the beach. So, um, and she has promised to come back in 2022 to preach on our United Methodist Women's Sunday here at the, at the church. So we get for, uh, looking forward to seeing her here in, in the near future. So remember... If you're still in contact, it's a secret. She doesn't know. So please, please drop off those cards or send a letter or a note to the, our office here to say congratulations to Linda Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Um, I know many of you who, uh, you know, I've heard so many wonderful things about Linda. Of course, met her a couple of times uh, doing a couple of funerals with her. Uh, so uh, I'm excited for her that she gets to retire and go to the beach. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. I know that would be a, a wonderful opportunity for you all to express your thankfulness for her and for what she meant to you while she was here. So <clears throat> uh, thank you for uh, being willing to do that. At this time, uh, remember we, we wear masks for the hymns. But let's stand as we sing America, my country tis of thee. Let's stand as we sing.
flowers here in the sanctuary are given to the glory of God and in humble memory of all those who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our nation, especially those who served with Don, Bob, and Chris by Don and Kim Malico. And so, Kim, thank you so much. They're beautiful. And what a wonderful thing to remember. Uh, and in fact, that's what we're, we are going to share is... I think every one of us knows somebody who uh, was a hero uh, for us. There are so many heroes in, in our culture that we uh, appreciate, but one of those heroes that we have is those who have served, and those who have served our country, uh, and, and that many of them have passed on. Some died in battle, some died uh, after uh, serving, and <clears throat> of old age, or uh, but every one of us knows somebody uh, that was a veteran that has died and is no longer with us. And so what I'm going to do is give each one of you an opportunity to uh, get up and to say that person's name. You may have two or three of them, uh, but uh, we are going to remember uh, one of the greatest things that I think we can do is that phrase, fallen but not forgotten. And one of the things that we can do today is to remind ourselves and remind others that we have not forgotten. We have not forgotten those that gave of themselves for us and for our country. Um, we would not have the wonderful freedoms that we have to be able to even be here this morning if it was not for so many who gave and served and, and, and gave the ultimate sacrifice. So... Um, if you would like to, uh, at this time, uh, stand and share uh, a name or two names or several names uh, of those that... Yes, Mike. Honorable Walter Kowski served in the Air Force, part of the greatest generation, uh, passed away. Uh, and my friend, uh, childhood friend, Joey Maysack, uh, killed in Gulf War I. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes, Angela. Um, I have been honored that many members of my family have served. Um, a great great uncle, Pearl Sterner, served in World War II. Uh, my father, uh, another uncle. I have numerous cousins. Uh, and my son, too, has also served in all of the Navy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Billy. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Buck Newstrom, Kathy Stan, mm -hmm. served in the Second World War and, and uh, retired uh, some time ago and passed away. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorraine. My two brothers, <coughs> uh, Robert Nathaniel Hawkins, who is deceased, and he was in the Vietnam War. He wasn't killed in the Vietnam War. And then I have another, he was in U.S. Army. And then I have another brother, uh, James Hawkins, who was in the Air Force. So he is still living. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, father, John, in the First World War, and both my brothers, myself, uh, during the Korean and the Vietnamese War. My mother was the luckiest woman on the planet. Everybody came home safe. My older brother was a little shell shot. I was always afraid of him anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? One of the things that uh, Billy touched on, the fact that they volunteered um, in World War II, a lot of the ones who served and died and stuff in that war volunteered. Uh, it's not like today where they basically have to <laughs> almost uh, recruit and, and do anything and everything to recruit people to get in. Um, but back then, just about every, uh, most people and so many volunteered and, and they gave their ultimate sacrifice. I know uh, my father was one of them, Jones Martin Mason. Uh, he was a paratrooper in World War II. He volunteered. Uh, and in fact, he had to go through the volunteer process a couple times because the front, he could not see it. without his glasses he was pretty well blind um, and so the first time he couldn't see it so the second time he went he uh, he listened to what the person in front of him said and he just repeated it <laughs> that's how bad they used the how want, they wanted to serve their country uh, and everything so uh, uh, and then also my wife's, Barbara's father, uh, uh, Paul Facey, uh, also served and has passed on. So, anybody else that you know that you would like to recognize? Well, at this time, let us have a, a moment of silence for those memories. Uh, and for those who have uh, died and gone on, whether they died in battle or whether they served and have died, uh, they are not forgotten. They are not forgotten. So let us, let us go to the Lord in prayer as we remember a silent a time of silence. Gracious God, there are times in our lives that we realize silence is loud. Especially when we are present, when one passes on. And the silence is deafening in our hearts in our minds and our spirits. But Lord, I thank you 
for all those who served our country that we celebrate this Memorial Day weekend. We thank you that they are fallen, but they are not forgotten. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As you notice the prayer list there, it's a long prayer list. Have a couple of updates um, for people. <clears throat> One, um, uh, Doris Sorrells, uh, she is doing so well at Givens and with her rehab that she is actually finishing up this week on, uh, I think it's June the 7th, she'll be going back to Arbor Terrace. Uh, she uh, wants to say thank you. I want to say thanks to John and to Mary and to all those who went to uh, see her and stuff. Uh, but she appreciated that. Uh, and so she is doing well. We praise the Lord for that. Uh, Ron and Zoe uh, Sams uh, is, are also doing well. She's recovering and recuperating. The doctor has actually let her go from her uh, stroke that she had. Uh, so she is doing well and his foot is getting better. He's still not able to drive the big bus, but he can drive a vehicle now. Um, so, but he says thank you for the, the prayers. Uh, Delayla, uh, we'd like your prayers for her. Her, her little companion, uh, her little dog uh, passed away. Uh, and of course, as many of you know, when you've had a little dog for 10, 12 years, that becomes like family. And so, but uh, she is excited uh, because Zane's granddaughter, I believe it is, uh, is, is looking to get her a, uh, a, another dog uh, to, so that she won't be quite so lonely. So uh, she's looking forward to that. Um, and Phyllis Lee, uh, she has moved now. She is uh, living with her daughter uh, at her daughter's house. And she says uh, things are going well. But she, they still haven't got everything unpacked yet, but still doing pretty well. Um, so, uh, those are just a, a few of the ones that uh, we kind of have updates on and, and things. Uh, and also, Dave and Carol Edwards, I know I was talking with Bill earlier, but uh, I talked with uh, Carol recently, and, and Dave uh, could definitely use your prayers. Um, and there's uh, good things. and and uh, things, the chemo seems to be working in some ways, but it's also affecting him and others. So uh, we need to lift them up in prayer. Uh, so uh, let's just go into a time of prayer then as uh, we focus on uh, just the fact that God is with us. God is with us and with all those that we care about. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we thank you for that, that you were with us in times of hurting, in times of bad health, in times where we lose a loved one. Lord, you were with us in every, every sense of the word, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you that you were with each one that is on our prayer list. We thank you for those uh, updates of rejoicing that we can have, for the good things that we can hear about one another. Um, but Lord, we also know that there are others still struggling. And we just pray that you would bring healing to those who need it, bring comfort and care to those who need that. Whatever the issue is, Lord, we know that you can meet that need, <clears throat> and we thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that now that as you have taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we will not take up or not pass offering plates, but... Uh, we do want to thank you, uh, all those who are, uh, are at home or all those who are here. 
uh, for continuing to be faithful and continuing to share and to give. We thank you for that. Uh, and just pray that as God puts it on your heart, that we would continue to give to his church. Uh, and at this time, we're going to have our uh, Carillon uh, dedication. Uh, and I'm going to ask if Les Love would come first and share a few thoughts. And then uh, Harriet Burnett will follow. And then Billy will follow. There you go. You know, this has been such an exciting project for our church. We have Charlie. And that just accented it so much. And I'm, I'm just honored to have been a part of it. Uh, the way this got started was a bunch of us were wanting to get the bell going, which you all already know about. So back in, gosh, it's been quite a while, back last year, we went up into the bell tower and we were looking at what we can do to get our bell started. And we were saying, wait a minute, there's a bunch of speakers up here. What about this uh, chime system that we've got up here? Wonder if we could get that up and going again. So we thought, okay, let's call Bruce Jensen, our guy that helps us with these acoustical boards that are over in the Fellowship Center and the ones that are back here in the sanctuary. He's good on stuff like that. So Bruce said, well, I don't do that, but I know who does. It's a company called Moss Row out in California. They're the best. So I called the company, and I think this may be where God sort of helped us out a little bit. All the companies were shut down. This was during COVID back in October. Well, who should answer the phone but Paul Rowe? the owner of Moss Row Company, all the way out in California, he said, you know, we're shut down, but I just happened to be in here, and I saw the phone ringing, so I thought I'd answer it. Well, he and I talked for 20 minutes about his company and all the things he'd gone through. His partner had died several years ago, so he was the sole owner. And he said, you know, the, the system that you probably had in there is so outdated you need, to, you need to get a digital system that we have now. It is so much better, as we all know digital things are. And he said they'll probably run you between twelve dollars and $15,000. I thought, wow, that sounds great to me. So uh, he said, and there is an incredible dealer in Traveler's Rest that he knows personally that installs these and does everything. His name is Don Dockery. So he said, please give him a call, and, and he, he's great. So with that kind of recommendation, how could we go wrong? So uh, I called Don. Don said, yeah, I'd be happy. I'm familiar with that, that area up there. I'll come up and look and, and see what we can do. Don came up and looked and, and said, that'll be 13500 to do a turnkey job. New speakers, new unit, everything. So... Steve Van Reenen uh, threw that out to the trustees. Everybody got so excited that we could have a, a brand new Carillon system in our church. But how are we going to pay for it? Steve is our man. He's our treasurer. He came up with this idea. The Irene Clark Endowment Fund, it's so good. It started out at $64,000 years ago. And it is amazing what all we have come up with on the music end of our church. New piano and now this and many, many other things. So let's do it. Fully paid for with this endowment fund. So thank you, Irene Clark. And thank you, Harriet, for approving this. It's been exciting. Thank you. very exciting to me too. I, my name is Harriet Holcomb Burnett and my aunt and uncle were W.C. and Irene Holcomb Clark. And 
During these reflections, I will refer to them as Clark and Irene because that's what we call them, my brothers and I, and I've mentioned my brothers before. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. I've always thought that my Aunt Irene Holcomb was born with a song in her heart. Starting with taking piano at a young age, she would go on in life to become a music teacher in this area. Her singing voice was magnificent. She had a high soprano voice. And as a lifelong college friend stated to me, Irene could have easily had an operatic career, but chose to come back to her roots and teach mountain music to children, mountain children music. She uh, was very emphatic about teaching children. She was Glee Club director at Weaverville High School, then going on to North Muckham High School. She taught music and directed their chorus. Irene taught many voice and piano lessons privately. Last year there was an organ concert given by someone at the Baptist Church and she started taking piano from Irene at an early age. Not being able to afford lessons, my aunt was able to acquire funding so she could continue with her music and I've got question marks because she did this for a lot of her students. After retiring from teaching, Irene became choir director at this church. She also volunteered by teaching music to kindergarten students at Weaverville Primary School on a weekly basis for a number of years. My uncle Clark had managed to break away from pastoral assignments along the Atlantic coast and return to the mountains. His first wife died in Delaware, leaving him with a three-year-old daughter, Miriam. She would come south with her father to live with some, mount, some family in Mount Holly, North Carolina. That's where he was from. Clark served in this area, the Methodist Protestant, Protestant Church, in 1938. A year later, the three branches of Methodism merged in the United States. It became simply Weaverville Methodist Church. Irene and Clark met one summer in the late 30s as he was preaching at Clark's Chapel United Methodist Church, and that happens to be where I'm a member now. She played the piano. They would marry in 1943, and during these years, she would help in many ways as he served churches in the Western North Carolina Conference. She would help direct the choir. She may have to play, play the piano. And then, of course, if there were enough children, she would start a junior choir. Clark's last appointment in the 60s was at Marshall United Methodist Church. During previous years, he accepted temporary parish assignments while in the insurance business, and they had a home here in Riverville. While in Marshall, he was readmitted to the regular ministry. Clark was always involved in civic life serving as president of the Weaverville Lions Club, and Irene was a founding member of the Weaverville Music Study Club in 1941. Clark went on to serve as a treasurer of this group later on. Willard Clark, Clark was a favorite advocate for the beliefs of the United Methodist Church. An uncle of mine, heaven help him, chose to become a member of a different faith, he was always starting discussions about Methodism, thinking he knew more than Clark. My brothers and I were always in awe and so gleeful that our uncle always won these arguments. Clark died in 1975 and Irene in 1998. Before her death, she shared with me the contents of her will. She wanted a scholarship in her teacher's name started at Berea College, stating that they were such an important part of her education, this teacher and the college. Irene
Lorraine loved the Weaver Village United Methodist Church and was indebted to them for providing her income in later years. A perpetual endowment in memory of her late husband, W.C. Clark, was to be established to promote the music programs of the church. Interest income from the fund has helped, as we've heard, in many ways. Billy Stowe will tell more about how the money has been spent. Irene and Clark would be so pleased that the church has chosen Carol Ogs as a blessing for the community to hear beautiful music each day. My aunt and uncle were very special to their families and many others. We hope the endowment will benefit Weaver Bill United Methodist Church for many years. I would like to share a little memory that I have of, of uh, Irene and then go a little bit more into what we did. It goes back farther than this church. When I was a little boy, probably 10, 11, 12 years old, early 60s, late 50s, uh, Mr. Clark was the uh, minister uh, where I grew up out in, uh, in Mr. Payne T. Lester, not Lee Sester, Lester. Back then they had, and they still do in some areas, what they call a charge churches. There was three, maybe two, three churches on one shared ministry. Well, every Sunday that we had 10 o'clock preaching, uh, which I don't know, they, they, they all mixed up. I was just a little boy. Uh, but we knew that when we had 10 o'clock service, that Miss Clark would drive out to Wester and lead the choir, and she did that so she could be back here by 11 o'clock. But she was really big on children singing. I mean, she required, that's okay, you know, but she wanted the children to have appreciation of music. Well, not very many 10, 11, 12 year old boys can carry a tune. Well, I was no exception. I, no, I couldn't sing. Well, best of good. You gotta get all of them sitting there a little off key, and then, you know. So as time goes on, you know, and that she goes. So I, you know, grew up married and everything. Moved back here, we lived in East Nashville, but we, we came here in, in the late 80s. I'd been here a year, Miss Irene Collin. Did he come sing my choir? <laughs> well, how do you know I'm Carrie Hume? <laughs> she said, well, you come on, you need to tell. So we kicked it around and, and, and we did, we eventually got here. And I sung with her a couple of years in her choir and then I did the, the Messiah, uh, um, study club Messiah thing a couple of years. And, uh, then the work schedule. Uh, I couldn't commit to, to being here for practice and all that, so I dropped out of it. But she was a little woman. She was a little, little bitty thing. I, you know, but she was, boy, she could sing and she could really, she was in music. So as Harriet said, when she uh, when she uh, passed near her will, she did uh, uh, leave the church in Dallas with the stipulation, uh, or by whatever, that we could use the interest off of it only for music was on, on trustees at that time, and we said, well, sure, you know, why not? Not realizing that it could really grow like it did. I mean, you know, everybody has investments, and it's up and down. But over the years, and I guess that thing came in in 99, maybe 2000, where I got finalized on it, they used that money for a lot of stuff. Uh, music, and I, I think uh, some bells, just wonderful piano, all that paid for with out of that fund with, with money left. So let's go back with the, uh, a lot of us came up with the idea, boy, it sure would be nice to have chimes that really work and all that. Ministry for the community, you know, those things go off, you can hear them everywhere, which is great. The town of was all around, they said, oh, that would just be a beautiful addition to, to, to the downtown scene and all that. Then he came up with the price and was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, we're in a, we in a, a crunch here where we're asking for extra money for the roof and for the Fellowship Center of Heating and Air Conditioning. So it's going to be hard to start a fund drive and, and convince people that we need these these chimes. You know, it's just it's, it's not a good and a pandemic, uh, a year like none other. Uh, so what we're going to do? Well, we were talking there one morning, and uh, Don Malcolm and I were talking. And I said, you know, there's a music fund, and you don't get much more musical than uh, than those chimes. That's about as much music you're going to get as far as uh, anything, you know. And, 
And so we came to Steve and said, let's look at this thing. There was a lot more than enough, more than enough to, uh, to get all that done. And, and, and at all the cost of Irene Clark, her commitment to the music world, her commitment to this church, her commitment to this community. And we have this plaque. It's very heavy. It says, in appreciation of Irene Clark for establishing an endowment fund providing the beautiful Carillon Chime System 2021. Now these chimes, they're still in their infancy. There's a lot of things they'll do. And I was just talking to Charlie. Uh, he's done a lot with them, but there's an instruction book about that thick right over here. <laughs> he said, I'm welcome to any angry that can help me to get this. But we want to eventually get a program where we count not every hour, hours it play, any music you want to play. Uh, the first thing he wanted to play with it, which the, the guy that put it in played, thank God I'm a country boy, came out on those chimes first day they're there. You know? <laughs> so, but that's not what we're going to play. We're going we're gonna to get a little more church in that. But uh, eventually uh, there will be time and there'll be messages. There will be time. We, we don't know, 9, 12, 6, or whatever, they'll play, chime the hour, play music, but uh, this is fantastic, and he's going to play them here in a little bit, and we'll play them as we leave, and uh, you just really see how beautiful they are, so uh, Ms. Clark, thank you. Bill, go ahead and leave. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As Angela comes up here, uh, Miss Harriet specifically asked Angela to sing this song, and I believe it was one of Irene's favorites. Oh, yes. And everything. So uh, Harriet asked uh, Angela specifically to sing it in memory of uh, Miss Irene. And I did approve it with Charlie. After I asked her. <laughs>
thought she did a great job. I'm not prejudiced in any way at all. But, uh, and also, if you enjoy, uh, Angela is a part of the Montford Players, the uh, Shakespeare in the Park. Uh, they've started, uh, this weekend was the start of a new uh, play that she is in and, and is doing. And uh, so I'm sure she would love to see any of you come to the Montford Players, the Shakespeare in the Park thing, and, and enjoy an evening uh, out there. So uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Mike uh, to come forward as... Um, we're going to present to him the plaque, uh, and then he is going to put it up for us, uh, and then you will be able to see it. I'm going to tell, let, tell, let him tell you where he's going to put it so that you can look for it uh, in just a little bit. Well, thank you. I had the privilege of uh, making the plaque, mounting it, and uh, with the help of Steve, we've got it prepared. We'll mount it in the hall, so as you leave, it'll be on the left-hand side, and We'll take good care of this, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to give Harriet the opportunity to ring the bells for a minute. Just okay. a second. It, wasn't that awesome? That was beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> I know that is a gift that will bless this uh, church and the surrounding community uh, in many ways over the years. At this time, uh, reading from the Gospel of John, uh, the fifth chapter, and we'll be starting with verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
minute after Billy did that. So now if I if I see anybody starting to fall asleep, I know what to do. <laughs> that was loud in my ear. I don't know about you all, but that was loud in my ear. I was I was ringing for a while. But um, you know, one of the phrases that we hear especially about those uh, wonderful, brave men and women who served our country and gave their all for us um, and died either on the battlefield or shortly after they came home. Um, we hear the phrase, fallen but not forgotten. Fallen but not forgotten. And that, I hope, is true uh, for us as a church as we... Uh, remember Memorial Day that we as a church would always remember the uh, people who have given us this freedom to meet that as a church we would always uh, uh, remember and never forget the gift that these men and women have given to us by their service and their, uh, their to our country and to us uh, hopefully our, our culture will not forget. Sometimes, well, I wonder <laughs> uh, and things, but hopefully uh, we will always be able to say they were fallen but not forgotten. But one thing I do know, I, we can't predict what you know, the, the, the culture will do. We can't predict what even the church will do in coming years. But one thing that I can assure you of, is that God keeps this. That God will always be able to, we will be able to say about God and Jesus Christ that they are fallen but not forgotten. God will never forget them. Jesus will never forget them. And this passage is wonderful in reminding us of this. Let me uh, share this one more time as I go through it. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. They are fallen. Many died on the battlefields. Many never came home. Some were missing in action uh, and, and some came home uh, later on. Some have not. They have fallen, but they are not forgotten. God has not for, forgotten them. Jesus Christ uh, gives this wonderful promise to them that they will hear the voice of God, that they will hear the voice of Jesus. This is a promise. This is a promise that, that not only do, will they receive, but it's a promise that we will receive. It's a promise that all who die in the Lord will receive, that we will hear the voice of the Son of God. Wow, that's a wonderful promise. God does not forget. No matter how uh, we live our lives and, and, and whether we think we're faithful enough or not, you know, because sometimes we think, oh, I, I'm not sure if I've been good enough. I, I don't know how many times I've heard this. I don't know whether I'm good enough or I don't know whether I've been faithful enough or I don't know whether I've done enough. You know, we, we all have doubts about how much that we've done or how much we need to do. But Jesus reminds us in there of this. He, he didn't say, well, now you have to have a certain level of good works. But he said, truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Savior and Lord? If you have then you will hear that voice. You will hear the voice of our master. You will hear the voice of the shepherd. You will hear. And that's a promise. It's a comforting promise. You know, when we think about all those who fell on the battlefields and we, we see reenactments and movies of all the things and all, all the horrific things that happened and how many men and women died on those battlefields. And yet I am comforted by knowing that they, if they knew Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they heard the voice of Jesus on that battlefield. They heard that voice. And 
and they live. They live. They will not be forgotten. They are fallen, but they are not forgotten by God. And then the passage goes on and says, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth. Did you hear that? That all who are in the tombs, all who have died, all who have been buried, all who are no longer with us, they will hear his voice and come forth. They will live. It's a promise that God has given to us in Jesus Christ. You know, we, we suffer in pain because of we, we miss the, those that we love when they have died. And we, you may have lost somebody this year in your family uh, with COVID and all. There's been a lot of deaths in, in throughout our, our country and throughout the world. But one of the things that continues to comfort us one of the things that continues to remind us is that Jesus Christ promised. He promised us that we will live. Even though we die, that we will live with him. We will hear his voice. He said those who are in the tombs, all of them will hear his voice. And they will come forth. They will come forth and live. I don't know about you, but that comforts me. That helps me to know that I have really nothing to fear about death. I know, you know, with COVID and all the things that happen, you know, it, it weighs on our minds, doesn't it? It weighs on our minds. But this passage lets us know that we will hear his voice and we will be able to come forth into the very presence of God himself. And we will live. We will live. And then at, at the end of it, it says, Though, and they will come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. But if we have Jesus Christ in our hearts, then we have the resurrection of life because God and Jesus Christ has forgiven us of our sins and that we are prepared to hear the voice of the shepherd. We are prepared to hear the voice of the Son of God. We are prepared to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. And we will come forth. And we will live. So I want you to envision just a second. Just here for a second. I want you to envision. Each, almost every one of us shared a name. Of someone that had fallen. In service, someone that you remember that has passed on. Envision that person. Wherever the grave may be, wherever the tomb may be, envision that person hearing on that judgment day the voice of the shepherd, the voice of the Son of God, the voice of Jesus Christ. And then coming forth. Envision that person coming forth into the very presence of the throne of God. Who will then say, come, thou faithful servant. Come and be with me and live forever. And live forever. For you see, that is a, one of the greatest promises we have as Christians. We have the promise of God that Jesus Christ will, when we die, will call forth our names. And we will be able to come forth and live. Amen. Let's stand as we sing, Eternal Father, strong to save. Let's stand as we sing.
to it and stuff on the organ. That's awesome. That's awesome. I hope that you will have a great Memorial Day, that you will have fun, that you'll do something exciting, cook out, be with family, friends, uh, do something fun. Because even if we have the pain of, of the grief of remembering a loved one who has passed on, we can know this. They have heard the voice of Jesus. They have heard the voice of Jesus. And they and us, one day, one day, we will meet each other again and come together and live and live. Amen? Amen. Amen.